everybody. Uh, welcome to this tutorial video on how to make circuits using Inkscape, specifically for IEEE format papers. I mean, you can use this tutorial to make you know professional looking circuits for any application, but the scaling and stuff that I've kind of used over the years is uh, sort of specific to that format. Um, so, <clears throat> Let's just jump right in. Oh, there will be timestamps down in the uh, down in the video description, so you can jump to specific topics if you need to. Um, what we're going to be building is this. Maybe just pull this over here. Uh, this is just an example buck converter, something like this. So I'll walk you through by the end of the tutorial. We will build this image, export it, etc., and I'll show you all the tools. Um, and I have. Um, and a starter file that I've included a link to in the description, so we should open that up. Um, <clears throat> and basically, I've just built a bunch of like building blocks type of things. Um, they'll make it all a little more simple. Um, so let's uh, let's do it. Let's see. <clears throat> First thing you probably should know is to how to draw straight lines. You'll see right here. I've actually got a few straight lines, but if you want to draw your own, um, just grab this tool over here. Uh, click once without holding and then hold control and control is going to lock you into a straight line um, and then double click to end the line right so <clears throat> that is basically just recreating this thing over here generally what I'm doing if if I'm doing a, a building a circuit I'll just copy and then paste what I need over on this side um, one thing that's really helpful to know this took me a while is these icons up here at the top you really want um, some of these disabled, especially this one. This is the big one. When scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same portion. Let me give you an example. If I put this rectangle and then I drag it, you see how the edges change? But then when I release it, it goes back to the line width. So if I go over here and I look at um, fill and stroke right here, and I go to stroke style, the line width should be one. Um, so if I select this object, line width one, and I drag it, after I drag it, the line width is still one. Without, if I have this enabled right here, and I drag it, it changes the line width. So then as I'm making circuits, see now it's huge. So really you want that disabled. That way when you're scaling things, um, there are all of the lines in your circuit are always the same width, which in the system I've created, um, it's supposed to be one, uh, just to keep it all proportional and kind of easy. Um, <clears throat> let's see. The, uh, the next thing probably we should look at is how to draw. I don't, I'm probably saying this wrong. Busy A curves, busy. I don't know. It's this tool right here. Um, B E Z I E R. <laughs> However, you say that. Basically, right here, like this is a sine wave, right? This is drawn using this tool. So if you click once, it's going to put a point down. And then if you click and hold, it's going to uh, draw these little handles that allow you to curve the line how you want. So if you click and hold again, click and hold again, double click to finish the line. Now, let's say we wanted to make a sine wave. What I would do is grab a box. I'll just copy and paste this one and I'll define exactly what height I would want and then you double click on the curve you've already drawn and you can pull the handles around and if you wanted to be really speci specific about or precise rather about this you could uh, you know make sure all the distances were correct um, like the all the dots were the same distance from other dots and things like that this is just sort of a rough example but you understand kind of how it works. So this is really powerful if you need to make new symbols um, or, you know, for a, a hundred other reasons. Uh, it's just good to know how to use that tool. So that's a really quick introduction. That's really not the point of this tutorial, but it's worth knowing that it's out there. So if you need a problem solved kind of on the fly, um, you can go use that. Um, so <clears throat> really quickly here, what I've done is, well, a few things, but this, this is the bread and butter these circuit building blocks. So let me just step you quickly through one of these, um, what they are. So take this one for instance. I'll just copy it over here and we'll just zoom in. So I'll go ahead and ungroup this. 
and you'll see that it's this line, this, which is another group. So if I ungroup that, that's just a couple lines. And then this circle. This circle, if you go over to fill and stroke, is gonna have um, a stroke width of about one and then a fill. Uh, this means you don't fill it with anything, but if you click this, that'll fill it with the color and you'll see the color is set to white. Um, so what that does, that's, uh, should have been white. There you go. Um, what that does is, and we'll just delete that because it doesn't matter. What that, what that sort of useful, usefulness of that is that um, if I put a line down and then I want to copy a component, it just falls on top of the line. So it's really easy to build circuits. So basically all of these um, building blocks are done that way. For instance, this switch right here. Say we wanted to copy one of those. I'll zoom in. There's actually a white box. Let's see. I'll, I'll dissect this one for us. See this right here? That's a white box that you can't see. It's in the background. And then it's a bunch of connected lines, right? So <clears throat> what happens is when you drag this over the line, you can literally just drag and drop it like it's in the circuit because that white box is covering the line in the back where it needs to. Um, and that's how all these work. So if you have a diode, it does the same thing. If you have uh, an inductor, it does the same thing. Uh, it snaps to that, but you get the idea. Um, and see right, actually right here, this is worth pointing out. This, um, if you zoom out, there's, see if I can find it. Right here, you probably see on the recording a faint line right there, so you gotta be careful. You really wanna make sure you put it in the right place and um, actually get everything lined up well, or sometimes you can see some mess. Uh, but you get the idea. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what is the next thing we're gonna talk about? Okay, using same size circuit labels. So what I have over here is a bunch of example um, labels, right? So how I would use this is if I've already drawn the circuit, and I'll show this later, I would just copy this. Let's say I need something that says C out. It's not so easy for whatever reason in my uh, experience with Inkscape to use the text sizing and subscript stuff. It's like every time I do it, they come out a different size. If you change stuff in a different order, it's just kind of confusing. So what I do is I'll just take one of these that I already have made, type over here as is, like just add on and then delete this stuff. So then I have one that's exactly the same size as everything else so I can keep the sizes consistent. If I don't do that, let's say I, I don't know, let's say, let's say I copy this, delete all these, then the size of everything has changed. I need R not. Then it's, see what I mean? Like where did, where did that size come from? I, I don't, it's like just the subscript, but then if you take this and you do like unsubscript, then you highlight a portion of it and subscript it again. It just feels like to me, all the sizes change. See that R is smaller than the C, so it just gets janky. So what I do every time, again, is I will add capitals on this side, add them here, or I mean not capitals, but I mean the, the non-subscript, the normal text, and then I'll add subscript text over on this side and delete what I don't need in between and then it comes out just the same size. I know that's a little bit nuanceical. That's more just a sort of a practical tip that I have found useful when I'm actually implementing this stuff because it's a little bit uh, janky to work with, in my opinion. <clears throat> but anyway, so generally in IEEE, you don't want to italicize numbers. So you'll see right here, Q is italicized and one and four are not. GS should be, I don't know why that's not. Um, but right here, four is not, then everything else here is italicized. Um, these are alpha, beta, phi, some symbols I've drawn, but these are just using this tool. So, I mean, you can go in here and basically change the way these look if you wanted. Um, and then, yeah, just basically all this stuff right here is just helpful tools to help you build a circuit real, real quickly. And then this is just to help keep the text size as uniform once you kind of know how to use the system. I'll quickly walk you through what else is on this sheet. So here is an example of a circuit. 
Um, this is a buck converter. This is the one we'll build today. And you'll notice that um, <clears throat> actually there's a background on this. This is a white background that I've just changed the color red to. But I put this white white background because often, actually probably easier to see like this. So the way I made all these uh, circuit symbols, like I said, they have white boxes. So, so you can just drag and drop them. Sometimes if you don't put this white background behind the entire circuit, um, there's teeny little faint edges where the white box meets the sort of the void space of the PNG image. Um, and it shows up in the paper and it just looks kind of weird. So generally I put a white box behind all of them because that way I can still drag and drop components so I can build stuff really fast, but then everything looks uniform. So it, it ends up looking better. So I'll show you how to do that later. It's not that big of a deal. Just something to be aware of. If you're seeing little boxes around the components, this is my this is the way I get around it. Um, waveform examples. Again, the building blocks for this I included up top. Just just this is just an example of maybe how you would use this, right? You got uh, waveforms all reference the same time axis and then labeling um, sectors up here. Um, but anyways, you get it. Let's see, block diagram example. There's basically just a lot of stuff you can do with this. You can import images and then label them. So this is a circuit I had. Um, I needed to do some labeling. This is an example of my testing setup. And then this is an excuse to scrolling that was scrolling out so far. This example, maybe some oscilloscope waveforms. And the reason I have this in here is not because people aren't able to label waveforms. This is for my own reference. I have found that the text size on these, like for instance, the text size there or here, or especially the text size here relative to this oscilloscope screen grab is appropriate. It's really good when I import it into an IEEE paper. So it matches the text size in the document pretty well. And that's exactly what I'm going for. So I save these examples so I don't have to go refine that text size every time. Um, <clears throat> so let's just uh, let's jump right into it. I'll, I'll build a quick example. I'll copy this box over as my main uh, circuit outline for the butt converter. Whoops, that's not right. There we go. Get my screen set up. Then I'll grab these horizontal lines, zoom in here. And then if you just grab this arrow, it's only going to move in one dimension no matter where your mouse goes. Makes your life really easy. So I'll just do that. Copy that. Throw it over here. I'm going to need a resistor for the output. I'm going to need a capacitor for the output. I'm going to need a horizontal inductor. I'm going to need a switch and a diode and a voltage source. So let's just line these up. Boom, bam. Okay, if you click once, you can scale, which is not what you want to do. If you click a second time, you can rotate. So just like drawing straight lines, hold control and it'll rotate 90 degrees. And you can just drop that bad boy right there. Line the edges up. Good to go. Line this one up. Okay, so that's a buck converter. And then let's say we wanna, we wanna label some stuff. Let's say this is our load right here. And then I don't have a C out label, so I'll just copy RL right here. C out, double delete, escape, and that's labeled. I'll go ahead and just copy this, delete the subscript for all of the uh, all the items that only have maybe a single letter. Let's say we're just labeling that uh, as as is, labeling it L D. Let's label the switch Q. I mean, this is just preference at this point, but <clears throat> label that Q. Um, we'll use V out over here and right here. Change this to N. 
V out's going to remain V out and grab some of these bad boys. Throw them right over here. And then I need to label maybe output current. You know, obviously you're just going to label whatever you need for the discussion you're trying to have. But let's just assume I need output current. I'm going to put the label right here. Just zooming around, baby. Let's see. Let's put it right there. Happy with that. Um, and then let's say we need, I don't know, inductor current. We'll do that. Use this one. There's really no reason that I have to use this I sub C to create um, inductor current. It's just one less thing for me to change, right? Um, so I don't have to change that I now. Uh, I, I L. Drag that into place. And just like that, in about, you know, three minutes, we've created a buck converter. Move this down, maybe center it a little bit. And you can label more, right? Like I think on this example, I labeled diode voltage and input current. And, I mean, you get it though. So now what I would do is if I want to export this, grab a rectangle and just use the lines at first to roughly line it up. So I really want to encompass the entire uh, the entire circuit here. Oh, I need ground. I always forget ground. Not so good. Okay. So then right here, I want to encompass the entire circuit. Take up no extra space though. So that's kind of the game you're trying to play. Let's, uh, let's scoot this in. So we can make this smaller because then I can scoot this down a little bit. Okay, and then I'll move this up above all of those. So then now this outer rectangle, what I'm gonna do is put a fill on it. Again, we've talked about this, right? So I'll put stark white, and then <clears throat> the stroke, I just wanna turn the stroke off. So now you notice everything that I copied before this rectangle is behind it. The real way to do this is to use layers. I don't really mess with that just because it isn't worth it to me. So what I do here is I'll just highlight everything and then hold the key, hold the shift key and click the rectangle. So I have everything but the rectangle selected and then right click, move to layer. And I'm moving it from layer one to layer one, but because it's the most recent thing moved, it'll be on top within that layer. So then I've still got this rectangle here but everything else is on top. I highlight the whole thing, including the outer rectangle, export PNG image, selection, that's what I want. I'll choose a density, I'll say 800 pixels across because normally that's enough. Export as, and I'll go to desktop, and where is it, Inkscape circuit example. I'll save here, and I'll say buck converter two. So that sets up what it's saved exported as, but then I have to actually click export. I forget to click this button all the time, so don't forget to click export. Export, and there you go. If we go look at our files, we now have a buck converter too that we just built. That easy. So I'll show you now uh, maybe what this looks like in, let's see, in an actual IEEE paper. I've got this paper, paper example um, I'll probably do a, I'll probably do a LaTeX um, tutorial eventually on this as well. But the whole idea of scaling is you want this text to be roughly the same size as the text in your images. So that's why I'm saying the scaling feels right for the way I have it set up. Um, and then this is very similar to what we just built, right? Scaling's correct. You import it, size it, and it looks uh, looks professionally done. So that'll be it for now. That's uh, that's a tutorial on how to use this. I have, a, again, have a download link to this file so you guys can grab this starter file, start making your own circuits. Let me know if you have questions or anything you want added or seen in other videos in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching.